All right, today I'm going to show you how to check out a compressor. Now, in the interactive module, you're able to do some uh, resistance measurements right on the plug of the compressor, but I'm going to show you what it looks like and how you can check that, that uh, compressor um, from a real, real system. Now, remember safety first. Always remember to, to unplug the disconnect. Make sure that we don't have any power to the unit. And there's something I want to show you before we uh, check out that compressor. So we've removed the disconnect from the disconnect box and I want to show you one thing that uh, that you can never assume and that's when you have removed the uh, disconnect from the the disconnect box that the power is always off. Now I've had this happen more than once to me so let's take a look at the inside of the disconnect box. What you have here is the line coming in from the power inside the home that should be connected to the two outside terminals so the white and the black right here on the outside terminals are the incoming power when you remove this disconnect it's basically a bus bar that connects the uh, incoming power to the load side and the load side is on both uh, both of the inside wires now I have seen this happen where there's been corrosion or something has melted this and you can and and you can't get the disconnect in there properly and the wires get melted and I've had and seen these two wires and these two wires which are both hot wire nutted together inside the box so with this on here and you pull your disconnect out you're assuming that uh, all the power is disconnected and it's not so rather than take this off um, I'll, I take my meter into the contactor on the condensing unit and check the incoming power and I'll show you how to do that when we get the cover off the unit. Alright, so I have my field piece set to volts AC and have located the incoming power to the, the unit and the power usually comes in at the bottom of the contactor, not usually it should always, but you can't assume anything. So if it's done right and done correctly the uh, power that we disconnected over at the disconnect box runs in here and connects to the bottom of the contactor. Now I don't normally put my meter up here wedging, wedging it in the uh, the circuit board compartment but for instructional purposes so you can see what's going on I put it up there. So then I just take my field piece meter and I'll plug it right on to the incoming power and I can see that it says 308.9, but the little M underneath it right here is millivolts, so I know that there is no power coming in. Now, if um, we had, would ha have had something wire nutted or miswired or the power not disconnected, then we're going to start reading some voltage. And there's a little high voltage indicator right here on the field piece that's going to beep at you and blink red if you have voltage that's over about 30 volts AC. So that's how I check to make sure the power is off before I start putting my fingers in there to check the compressor. Alright, so to check out your compressor, uh, it's not practical or and very efficient to be taking the entire unit apart and unplugging the plug to the compressor and then standing on your head to try and measure the resistance on the compressor itself. So the way that you measure the uh, resistance of a compressor is by locating the three wires that go to the compressor. Uh, the first one is going to come off of this uh, the capacitor right here and if you look at the top of your capacitor the terminals are going to be labeled HERM for hermetically sealed compressor, FAN for the FAN and then C for common. So you're going to want to find the HERM uh, terminal and the other thing you can do is trace back visually from the compressor and and see which wires are coming through and in this case it happens to be the yellow wire that comes off the capacitor so that's our first wire. The second and third wires are normally located right on the top of the contactor and the contactor has some spade connectors and then there's a lug here with some screws. The compressor is normally connected 
to the lugs by the screws and not the spade connector that you can just unplug. So you're gonna have we're gonna have to unscrew this before we uh, check the resistance of our compressor. Now that we've isolated the compressor, it's time to measure the the resistance of the windings on the compressor. So we have our three wires right here and we're going to do a few measurements. Now you should have your notebook out with a pen so you can record these because you won't ever be able to remember them, trust me, because I can't. And um, you'll end up measuring it six different times if you don't write it down. Alright, so first measurement, doesn't matter which one it is, we're just going to pick this one because it's easier and I can be hands-free to measure that. So we have our first measurement between one of the wires on the compressor and another wire on the compressor. Three point two ohms. You should be recording that in your notebook. And you're going to take your second measurement 1.9 ohms. So we have 3.2 and 1.9. In our last measurement is between the two remaining wires where we haven't measured and we have 1.3 ohms. Now if you've written down and followed along with this we have 1.3 1.9 and 3.2 ohms. The 1.3 plus the 1.9 ohms just happens to equal our third measurement which is 3.2. So a good compressor, if you have written down your resistance measurements, if you add the two smaller readings together, it should be exactly the resistance measurement of the third and largest may not be your third, but it'll be your largest resistance measurement. So 1.3 plus 1.9 equals 3.2. That indicates that the, the compressor windings um, have proper continuity and proper resistance, and that's what a good compressor looks like. Now, um, in a later video, we'll take a look at what a bad compressor looks like, but if you get any readings over 10 ohms on any winding, um, 75 seen 75 ohms or or no continuity, no resistance whatsoever, that is a bad winding. If they don't add up, um, there's something going on with that compressor. So just remember, safety first, the two smaller resistance measurements added together should equal exactly the largest resistance measurement.